Hello and welcome back to another Weathersphere video. As the days get shorter and the temperatures continue to drop, many people including myself are wondering what the winter season may hold for America this year. In this video, we'll dive into the latest forecasts and trends to give you a comprehensive overview of the upcoming winter season, so let's get into it. Of course, before I get into the forecasts, we need to know what factors will be in play over the course of the winter. The biggest and most important of these is the ENSO, or El Niño Southern Oscillation. This has two main phases, El Niño and La Niña, which respectively feature warmer or cooler ocean temperatures in the Pacific Ocean. These phases have widespread impacts on the weather that America gets during every season, especially winter. For this winter season, we are expected to be in the La Niña phase, though it will be weak. A majority of the models used to predict the ENSO phase say that we will likely see a neutral or weak La Niña during the winter months, which is seen as they dip below the zero line. A typical wintertime La Niña pattern features colder and wetter conditions across much of the northern tier, focused especially in the northwest, and warmer but drier weather in much of the south, while in El Niño, the south is wet and cooler than normal, while the north may be dry and warmer than normal. The polar jet stream tends to be more variable and lurks further south during a La Niña, which can lead to more numerous and more severe cold outbreaks in America. This was seen recently in February of 2021 across much of the country, where a major cold blast sent temperatures more than 50 degrees below average in spots, breaking many weather records for more than 10 states. The cold also brought significant snowfall from the Sierra and Cascades to the Texas Gulf Coast to the northeast. We likely will not see another outbreak of cold this extreme during the upcoming winter, but a La Nina makes similar, weaker Arctic blasts more likely to happen. Next, we'll get into what past winters can tell us about this upcoming season. This is an analog map showing the temperature anomalies across a selection of years, and the years used had a weak La Nina during the winter season, which is what we expect this winter. The time frame goes from November to March, and as you can see, a vast majority of the western and northern United States were cooler than average in such years, with warmer than average conditions in the deep south. Again, this does not mean that the upcoming winter will be exactly like this, but this helps point to what may happen. Precipitation-wise, the northwest, southeast, and mid-Atlantic saw drier than average conditions, while parts of the Great Lakes and southwest saw wetter than average conditions. Interestingly, this is somewhat different than what many forecast models are predicting for the season. Now, here is a map showing the average snowfall during a La Nina winter. As can be seen, much of the northern tier tends to experience more snow than in a normal winter, especially so across the mountainous west and lake effect areas of the northeast. Unfortunately for snow lovers, a majority of the southwest, Appalachians, and mid-Atlantic see less snowfall than normal in La Nina winters, especially so in the mid-Atlantic. Areas like southern New England, the southeast, and the Midwest have equal chances of seeing above or below average snowfall. Lastly before the models, here is what the National Weather Service is forecasting for this winter. They say the northwest has the best chance of seeing below average temperatures, while much of the south and east is likely to see warmer than average temps. They also call for wetter than normal conditions in the northwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley, and drier than average conditions across the southern U.S. Now, we'll get into the models. Starting off with the European model, it forecasts warmer than average conditions across the entire US, with a chance of near normal temps in the far northern areas. Our next model, the CFS, or American model. It paints a similar picture to the Euro, with warmth across the nation, though some average to below average weather might be possible in the extreme northern tier. The Canadian model is where things start to change. This model still shows warmth in the southern two-thirds of the country, but it also gives the northern tier significantly below average temperatures, in some cases reaching a mean of 3 to 4 degrees below average for the season. Our last temperature model, the North American, is less bullish on the extreme temps, giving slightly above average to most of the country. Moving now to precipitation, our CFS model gives a wet winter to some of the Northwest, Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Mid-Atlantic, while giving a dry winter to the southern tier. The Canadian model is much more bullish on giving a dry winter to nearly the entire country, except for a few spots in the northern Rockies and Cascades. Lastly for the models, the North American is very similar to the CFS, with above average precip in the northwest and Ohio Valley, and with below average precip in the southern tier. Finally, here are my thoughts on this winter season. 
It is still too early to put values on these maps, so this will only be the chance I believe these areas have at seeing the conditions. Starting with temperatures, much of the southern two-thirds of the U.S. looks to have a good chance of staying at or above average, with the greatest chance of warmer than normal temperatures being across the southwest and Florida. The best chance of below average temperatures looks to stay well north into the northern Great Plains and Rockies, where the polar jet stream will stay fairly active throughout the winter. In terms of precipitation, most of the southern tier also looks to stay drier than average. With an active polar jet and less active subtropical jet, storms will tend to go north of these areas, leading to less rainfall than normal. The Northwest, Ohio Valley, and New England look to have the best chance of seeing above normal precipitation. Once again, an active polar jet stream tends to bring many storms into this area, leading to increased rainfall probabilities and heavy mountain snow. There also looks to be an increased likelihood of strong storms that track across the Great Lakes this winter, which would bring considerable rainfall to the Ohio Valley and Northeast. Moving on to snowfall, the Northwest once again looks to have the best chance of above average snowfall, with a frequent storm track and near to slightly below average temperatures. The Cascades and Northern Rockies may do especially well this winter, assuming nothing major changes in the outlook. The Northern Great Lakes, Northern Plains, and Northern New England all have decent chances at above normal snowfall as well, with an active storm track and average to below average temps. The lake effect snow regions of New York may also see a few major events early in the season if conditions play out, so keep an eye out there. Now, unfortunately for snow lovers in the Mid-Atlantic, Appalachians, Southwest, and Southern Plains, conditions do not look favorable for these areas to see a lot of snowfall this year, with warm temperatures and an unfavorable storm track leading to more rain than snow in the Mid-Atlantic, and multiple dry spells in the Southwest. Of course, this does not mean you won't see any snow, but your chances of seeing average or above average snowfall is lower than in a normal year. Last but not least, here is my early outlook for the upcoming winter season. Starting off in the northwest, this area looks to stay very wet and snowy during the winter. With an active polar jet stream, frequent storms will pummel this region, leading to above average precipitation in many places. The northern plains and northern Great Lakes have the best chance of seeing brutal cold and above average snowfall this year outside of the Cascades and northern Rockies. The active polar jet will bring frequent clippers and arctic blasts to this region, with a few warmer and drier spells in between. The gray area in the Midwest and Ohio Valley has equal chances of being warmer and drier or cooler and wetter this winter. This zone is kind of sandwiched between the cool and wet to the north and the warm and dry to the south, so you'll see your fair share of both. Northern New England looks to be snowier than average, with near-average temperatures and a somewhat active storm track. The lake effect regions could also see a few major events this winter, especially early in the season. Of course, if northern New England sees a lot of snow, southern New England will get action too, though in this case, it looks to be more rain than snow. Frequent clippers and Great Lakes cutters should bring a lot of precipitation to this area, though it won't all be snow. Unfortunately for the mid-Atlantic, mild temps and an unfavorable storm track look to bring considerably less snowfall than average this winter. Of course, one major storm in some of these areas is enough to break above average, but overall, snowfall looks to be limited in these areas. A majority of the Mid-South and Central Plains will be warmer than average this winter, with likely less snowfall than average but more ice or mixing events. If just enough cold air can sink into this region, there is the possibility for significant ice or sleet storms in the area. Lastly, a vast majority of the southern tier will stay warmer and drier than average this winter especially so in the southwest and Florida. Of course, there is always the possibility of a late-season tropical storm in November that could bring a lot of rain to the southeast, but this chance is low. Thanks for watching. It's been a long while since my last video, so I apologize if this seemed rushed or rusty. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe, and please leave any feedback in the comments below, or tell me the city where you live, and I'll give an outlook for your area specifically. Thanks again, and have a good day.